Good morning, church. This is John Foster, and welcome to our online services this morning. Uh, I was talking with Pastor Bill briefly this afternoon, and he's, he was saying, you know, as far as Christians are concerned, uh, to obey the laws of the land is to obey God and, and, and live in His favor. So we are being safe, we're being cautious, but we are still worshiping together. So uh, thank you so much for join, joining us online. And I just want to let you know that uh, as soon as this ordeal is over with, we're going to be back together again. We are hoping and praying uh, that it will be able to enable us to gather together for Easter Sunday morning. Uh, please just uh, be aware and, and watch for that. And if not, you know, we'll just trust that, that God's going to be in that too. So uh, God bless you this morning as we have church together. Be with all the members of our congregation and the people across this country and across the world as we deal with this virus that, that has taken lives already, has put us in a situation where we're all separated and feeling kind of isolated. Let this be a time of comfort and of worship to you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. So today we're going to be covering a subject called faithfulness. I'm going to start out with Old Faithful. Old Faithful is a cone geyser located in Wyoming in Yellowstone National Park in the United States. Old Faithful was named in 1870 during the Washburn Expedition and was the first geyser in the park to receive a name. Faithful will erupt 65 minutes after eruption, lasting less than 2.5 minutes. And they say you can set your clock by it. It is something that we can look at as faithful. This is something we know it has happened in the past. It's happening in today, and we can look forward to it happening in the future. And thousands of people go to that park and they get to see Old Faithful and what Old Faithful is doing and how it's reacting. And the surprise on people's faces when they see the water go up. 
that's being heated underground by a flow of lava flow. So this is something that has been special to many people over many generations already. So with that in mind, we're going to look at God's faithfulness. Now some people would say, well, God's not being faithful right now. God has, has kind of walked away or looked the other way. No, God is in charge of everything. We don't know the purposes and the reasons behind what's happening. I've heard a lot of different theories, but nobody really knows why things are happening the way they're happening. But God is still in charge. God's faithfulness. Lamentations 3, 22 through 23. Through the Lord's mercies we're not consumed, because His faithfulness, His compassions fail not. They are renewed every morning. We sing a song called, Great is Thy Faithfulness. God is faithful to us. Through His mercies we're not consumed, because His compassions fail not, and they're renewed every morning. You know, mankind going all the way back, one of the things that's an inspiration for man is people look to the dawn. When the night is dark and when things are bad, whether it is a bad situation in a family, whether it's people that are hurting, whether it's a war situation, man always looks towards that morning, that renewal, that new time. God is faithful. The day has come and the sun has come up every day since God said, let there be light. Deuteronomy 7, 9. Therefore know that the Lord your God, He is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercies for a thousand generations with those who love Him and keep His commandment. Did you hear the if-then statement in that? The if-then statement was, for those who love Him and keep His commandments, He's faithful. He takes care. He watches over. He protects. Are we being faithful? So that God can be faithful. People all the time will say, Pastor, my life's a wreck, and this is happening, that's happening, and this happened. And my answer to them is, okay, how are you doing? How's your faith? Are you doing the things that you're supposed to do so God can do the things He's supposed to do? Are you living the life you should be living? Are you spending time with God? God wants to be faithful to you. But if you're not being faithful to God, God's not always going to be faithful to you. Some things will still happen. The sun will still rise. There will still be wheat in the fields that grow. But the things that you're wanting for and you're asking for, if your heart's not right, don't expect a faithful, blessing God when you're not doing the things you're supposed to be doing. Psalms 36, 5. Your mercies, O Lord, is in the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches unto the clouds. There's no limit to God's mercies and His faithfulness. God is faithful now, He was faithful in the past, and He will be faithful in the future. What are we doing to make sure that He has that ability to be faithful for us? Now, is our actions a requirement for what God does? No. God can bless you anyway. Even when you're wrong, He can still bless you. He can choose to do that. But God says in His Word, He wants to bless you, but He has to be able to bless you. You've got to be ready. You've got to be willing. You've got to do the things that you can receive the blessings and the care that He wants to give you. Thessalonians 3.3 3. But the Lord is faithful, 
who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. God knows that there is an evil one that walks this earth. He wants to kill and destroy. Right now it seems like he's having a heyday. God wants to protect you from the evil one. But you know what? You have to do what you're supposed to be doing, what you're supposed to be doing, so he can protect you from that evil one. If you leave yourself open, how do you do that? If you're living a life that includes alcohol and drug and sin and all these other things, you are leaving yourself open to the evil one being able to get into your life. And as some people say, I don't like people in your business, in my business. Well, if you're doing those things, you're letting the evil one be into your business. You're giving him those opportunities. So you have to do your part also. The next thing we're going to talk about is Jesus' faithfulness. Jesus is faithful. He's faithful in many ways. One of the ways that He is faithful is that He saved people without people doing anything. First of all, He was faithful when we weren't. He did what He did even when people hated Him and abused Him and did bad things to Him. He was faithful not to us but to God. Because God sent Him, His only Son, to come here and fulfill a purpose and be faithful in doing that. 1 Timothy 1.12 And I thank Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has enabled me because He counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. And when I say putting me into the ministry, that's not talking about me being a pastor, although it's included in that. It's all ministries. We minister in many different ways. And whatever your gift is that God has allowed you to be ministered in, in that way, you need to be doing that. You need to be included in the group called the ministers. You need to be the ones that are reaching out and giving people the opportunity to hear Christ. Is anybody hearing Christ from you? You say, well, I'm not a preacher. I'm not going to go around and, 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 and start getting in people's business. There's many ways that you can minister. You can minister with a phone call. You can minister with a note. You can minister in many, many different ways. It's the little things. How you live your life is a ministry. As people see you live your life and how you're living your life, they will know whether or not you're a Christian. They will look at your life and say, that person has something that I want. And it will put that question in their heart. And then you'll have other people who will see your life and say, I don't want none of that. So you're being a minister to the good or to the bad every single day. Which type of minister are you being? Or are you being faithful to be the type of minister that Jesus Christ gave His life for? 1 Corinthians 1.9 God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. See, God was faithful. He did His part. He sent His Son to die on the cross for us before anybody did anything. All we have to do is accept that. But are we being faithful? Did we do the our part by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And if you did, now are you being faithful in being what it says right here, in fellowship with Jesus? Are you fellowshipping daily with Jesus? Are you spending time in your prayer? We'll talk about that a little bit more here in a minute. Revelations 1, 4 through 6. Grace to you and peace from Him who is and was and who is to come 
and from the seven spirits who are before the throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the rulers over the kings of the earth. We'll stop right there for a second. First, he was the faithful witness, but more, he is the firstborn of the dead. Jesus died and rose again out of the grave. He was the first one. All of our hopes, if Jesus did not rise from the dead, we have no hope of eternity. It took him dying, going to the grave, and rising again to set the pattern which we will follow later on whether through death or through rapture. One way or another, we will follow Jesus Christ in what He did first. A good manager or leader, a good manager or leader, what He will do is He will do something and let His people see Him doing it. And then once He's done it and they've seen Him do it, then they don't feel bad when he says, hey, would you do this? Because they've seen him do it. That shows good leadership. Jesus was many things, and one of the good things he was is a good leader. And his leadership shows today as him being a good leader by the way he led. the ruler over the kings of this earth. Do you understand all kings and principalities and anybody that is in power was put in power by God? Our nation and our leaders are telling us to stay at home. I heard a funny thing here yesterday, and it said, Millennials, our forefathers were asked to go to war and die for this nation. All you're asking to do, to do is stay home, sit on the couch, and watch TV. Don't mess this up. I thought that was very telling. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins with his own blood, verse 6, and has made us kings and priests to God and Father. To his God and Father. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Do you understand the minute you accept Jesus Christ, in God's eyes, from that moment on, you are a king, you are a royal, you are a royal priesthood. You don't need anybody to talk to God. You don't need to go to a, a pastor. You don't need to go to a deacon. You don't need to go to a priest or anybody else. At the moment of salvation, you are a royal priesthood. Look it up. It's in the scriptures. When you talk, your words are directly to God. You're speaking to your Father. You're speaking to Jesus. How are you doing it? Through the Holy Spirit that dwells in you. Every person, when you become a Christian, the Holy Spirit dwells inside of you. It's a microphone directly to the ear of God. When you speak, God hears you right now. You don't need to pray the same thing over and over again. When you say it, He hears it. Do you know that uh, there's something that people really don't like? When you ask for something and you go back the next day and you ask for the same thing again, you go back the third day and you ask for the same thing again, and about the fourth day you come back and go, look, I got it. Your father gets it. He gets it. He understands. He hears you. If you're a Christian and everything is right and you're prayed up, when you speak, your Father hears you. Now let's talk about our faithfulness. Our faithfulness. 1 Timothy 2.2 2. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses commit these faith, 
commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Are we faithful to teach others about Jesus Christ? Are we able to teach others about Jesus Christ? Are we willing to teach others? Paul says, and Timothy says, we taught you. It's not hidden. There's no mysteries. There's nothing that, that you have to run to somebody and say, I, 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 it's a, can you tell me this mystery? It's all in the Bible. It's right there. God doesn't want us working in secret. He's not like that school teacher that would teach you something and then hide everything from you and wait for you to take that test to see whether you remember what they said or not. No, he put it in a book that has survived throughout the ages that you can go to and you can read and know exactly what it is you're supposed to be doing. You know all the answers because they're in the Bible. Yes, you have to study it. More importantly, you have to read it. I have a... Some youth I, I dealt with in my last church. And they says, Pastor Bill, one of our hardest times that we have is just taking time and sitting down and reading the Bible because we've got so much stuff to do. And I looked at them and says, you walk around with these earplugs in your ears every day, listening to all kinds of music. I says, here's the hint. The whole Bible is digitalized in audio and available to anybody. And you can download it. And the whole package costs less than $20. And you can have the Bible at any time. And if you can't afford that, there are apps out there that will not only show you the Bible, it will read it to you. So the Bible is available audio. You walk around all the time listening to your phone, or your other devices, listening to music. The Bible's available that way. I saw something neat here the other day. Did you know that Alexa will read you the Bible? Yes, that's right. Alexa has the Bible. Alexa, uh, read me uh, Jeremiah. And she will start reading you the Bible. It's available to you. Matthew 25, 23. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Enter into the joy of your Lord. If you have lived a life doing what you're supposed to do in a good heart like we said last week, it takes three parts you have to do the right thing for the right people with the right heart. That is a work. That is a good work. That work is the only thing that gets to follow you into heaven. Here he is telling you. He wants to make you ruler over many things. But first, what did it say? Because you have been faithful over a few things. Have you been faithful? Have you been doing what you're supposed to be doing? If you have, He can take that and He's going to use that when you get to heaven. And you will hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. But guess what? You'll only hear that if you have done well and you have been a good and faithful servant. Luke 16, 10 through 12. He who is faithful, Jesus... And what is least is faithful also in much. Are you showing the example that Jesus gave? Jesus was faithful in small things and large things. Are you going to be faithful in small things and large things? Is that going to be the life that you live and the example that you show your children and your grandchildren? What kind of life are you going to live? He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. That speaks to your future in heaven. 
If you're not going to do what you're supposed to do down here, and you're not living the life showing the leadership and showing good works here, why would God have you in charge of big things in heaven? He wants to put you in big things in heaven. He has a plan for you. He has a lot going on that He wants to do with you. But faithfulness has to be there. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, things here on earth, who will commit to your trust the true riches which are in heaven? And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, God's, who will give you what is your own? You see, God watches you every day. He puts experiences in front of you, good experiences and bad experiences, to see with what heart you're going to handle it. So He knows how He can use you in the eternity that is coming. Are you living a life to where you're building for yourself an amazing future? Or are you just going to get there? I call it fire insurance. I know people who I'm, you never know about somebody, pretty good sure that they gave their life to Jesus Christ. But you know what? It's the last time after that they darkened the door of a church. They did any good works. They were charitable. They thought about other people. Will they get to heaven? Yeah. If they were truly gave their heart to Jesus. Now, if you listen to James, he's got a lot to say about that type of a person. He says, if their salvation, through that salvation and that overflowing of, this, of the Holy Spirit that was put inside of their, that person, there should be works. We can't say that somebody is or is not saved. But what's a telltale sign? Are there good works? Faithfulness. So let's break it down to three things. Faithfulness is prayer, sacrifice, and mercy. Prayer is the first and most important duty and the joy of every faithful follower of Jesus Christ. If you do not pray to God, don't expect from God. If you're not talking to God, if you have a good friend and then you never call them, you never visit them, you never write them a note, you never help them in any way, how do they think you are a good friend? Is that being a good friend? No. Good friends communicate. That's what God expects from you. He expects communication. He expects you to pray to Him and talk to Him. And we're not talking about the big outlandish prayers that you hear in these big assemblies and stuff. No, you wouldn't talk to your friend that way. When you talk to your friend, you talk about the little things in your life that are going on that bother you. The, the good things that happen. One of the things in my life that I do is when something good happens, I share it with my friends. When bad things happen, I share it with my friends. Are you doing the same thing with your best friend who's supposed to be your God? The one who died for you? Are you treating him like a best friend? Are you treating him like that person you kind of go see every now and then? Funny story. So, there was this guy and he knew he got to know a girl and they got to be real close. And then one day he goes over and he tells her how much he loves her and how much he cares about her and how important she is to him. They didn't go back for six weeks. He shows up six weeks later and he's got candy and he's got flowers and he tells her how much she means to him and how important she is to him and, and how much he loves her and everything else. Then he goes away for three months. What do you think she's going to be like when he shows up on the door after three months? Is she going to be all open arms and everything? Aren't you glad God's not that way? 
Aren't you glad that God is happy to see you no matter how long it has been? That He is waiting to hear from you constantly? Every time that you come to Him, He is pleased to hear from you? Aren't you glad He's that way? And He's not like this girlfriend we're talking about? That I don't think the guy treated much like a girlfriend in the first place. Next, let's talk about sacrifice. It's the second and the next most important duty and joy of every beloved child of God. Christ offered the ultimate sacrifice to God. His own prayerful suffering and the death on the cross. Christ prayed. Christ talked to God. Christ obeyed. Christ was faithful all the way to the cross. Are you sacrificing for God? You say, well, I don't really get that whole sacrificing thing. Are you doing things that make you uncomfortable for God? Do you give a tithe? That's something that you can do that's a sacrifice to God. Is it easy? No. Not always. Sometimes you know that there's things that you, you really need. But, it's one way you show your worship of God. Do you spend time with Him? Do you do for others? Do you sacrifice for others? Many times you're going to get a phone call from one of your Christian brethren, and they're going to say, hey, could you help me with... And you had something you wanted to do. Maybe it was to go to the beach, or you were going to take your boat out for the morning, or something like that. Will you give up what you want to do for what others need? That's sacrifice for the body. Last, mercy is essential to the life of every sinner who hopes to obtain significant mercy from God and to eventually enter the eternal life. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Being merciful to those who don't really deserve mercy. I have that happen. I have some people that can be really nasty to me. How do I handle that? Am I merciful towards them? Do I look past that time that maybe something was going on in their life? Maybe the car broke down. Maybe them and their wife had a big fight this morning and they come in and buddy, they're just looking for somebody to unload on. And it just happened to be me that day. And you know what's so easy? It's when they blast you to turn around and just blast them back. That's where mercy comes in. Mercy ain't always easy. Do you think it was easy for Jesus Christ to be merciful to the people who put Him on the cross? Could Jesus Christ open his mouth and call the host of angels in heaven to come down and wipe these people out? Absolutely. But he didn't. He looked forward to people coming and becoming Christians in the future. It's through Christ's mercies that we're able to say we're children of God. Let's take this moment and have a prayer. Father, I love you. I need you. And so do all that's watching this today. We feel isolated. We feel alone. We're being separated from our friends and our family. A lot of things are happening that we want to be involved with and we can't. And we need that mercy right now. Sometimes we're asked right now to sacrifice by staying at home and not attending. Last week, my wife's aunt who raised her passed away. And it was important in one way for us to be there, but it was also important for us to do what was best for everybody and follow the instructions that we've been given to isolate and not be traveling across the country 
Not be taking chances that either getting the virus or giving the virus. And that's hard decision. That's sacrificial. That's stuff you do out of love for others. And are we praying, Father? Thank you that you give us the ability to talk to you. Father, I pray for everybody that hears this. If they don't do anything else that we've talked about, pray to your Father. If you're a Christian, you should be praying, especially right now. You should be on your knees. You should be spending that quiet time. You should be talking to Him about how you feel and what you're going through. You don't have to make a big fancy prayer. Just tell your friend what you're going through. Because that's what was needed right now. Father, for everybody that's watching this video, I pray for them and their families that they stay safe and they stay healthy and they're not attacked by this. The love of Jesus Christ loves us and He can protect us. We need to call on Him. Not just as us, but as a whole nation. We ask all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.